Hello, this is Nemesis, another video review. This is actually the Bandai Soul Chogokin GX72 Megazord or Daizujin, depending on which version you got. This is, of course, the American release. Uh, I think distributed by Bluefin and believed. This is came just came out, and yeah, it's a big diecast version of the Megazord from the original Power Rangers. As you can see, we're gonna look at the box first, just because of well size constraints we have to kind of look at the box first before anything else um yeah here it is um you can see part of it here panning down you know there's the rest of it you know very nice artwork on the front of the little signature of the artist right there in the corner you know you got a warning you know this is not for children you know for 15 up bandai uh tamashi stuff on the side you got a nice picture of the megazord toy itself and on the other side you got the individual zords all nice lined up there on the front top you got a really big you know close-up of the megazord on the bottom the tank mode and on the back you got all the ways it can you know all the different zords and stuff and all the text on it, all the different zords and then the bottom you get the again the tank mode and the megazord itself and all that stuff all these different things and then down here but another sticker and then bluefin you know is distributing cautions and warnings and all that stuff so uh yep that's in the box And also in the box, including the styrofoam tray and the toy itself, there is a little uh, card of some sort, uh, just survey card and booklet, which tells you, you know, how to put it together from out, out of the box and everything and instructions of how to convert them and everything and put them together and nice little bit of artwork back there. And was a power coin, or I guess combined power coin and warnings and all that stuff. Nice things there. So let's uh, get to the actual figure. So here they are. As soon as the clear. Yes. The individual Zords. Sabertooth Tiger, Mastodon, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Pterodactyl, and Triceratops. All five of them. And as you can already see, there's quite a bit of difference from these in the than the originals. Um, we'll go ahead and just start off, I guess, with the pterodactyl, because I guess it's the smallest, um, here. And you can see, uh, yeah. If the camera focuses, hopefully. Yeah, pterodactyl. No stickers this time, it's all painted and stuff, so you still got the detailing, but it's nice paint and no worry of, uh, it peeling off eventually one day. The wingspan is noticeably larger than the original. He's, because these wings, rather than folding, you know, kind of meeting in the middle, they kind of fold over each other now. Uh, but, you know, they still flap like that. The head can still go bob up and down. You know, two different joints, but that's about uh, all it can do. Um, I do not, I'm not sure, I do, I'm not sure if that's an actual, let's find out. I don't think it is, but, I, yeah, I don't think that's an actual joint. Oh, well. but uh, yeah, it's also got die cast right here, you know, shiny die cast so you can see reflections and whatnot. But yeah, it's got nice little details and stuff. It's a nice thing. And of course, just like the original, it can also have feet of sorts, except now they can also store in the Tyrannosaurus chest, which is pretty neat. Yep, just plug in like that and Tyrannosaurus doesn't want to stay standing. There you go. And yeah, they just like before, they just kind of clip on to the top bottom here they don't clip on as snugly as the originals because i guess they don't want you to you know scuff up the silver nice silver paint here this is really nice silver paint but it can still do that thing but yeah i see that kind of fells right off if you shake it a bit but you know as long as you're not shaking it like a doofus like i, I just did it will hold on pretty not solid so there's that um next moving on to the triceratops nice nice shiny gloss blue very dark nice blue um, unlike before, unlike the original, this one, actually the sides expand outwards, which is actually a pretty nice thing. But other than that, there's not a whole lot of articulation. I mean, his head can kind of move slightly to left and right. I mean, just a little bit. His 
all is then there's another joint here so you can kind of tilt the head a little his mouth can open although it's a little difficult to get going but you can kind of get the mouth open that's nice tail can of course move up and down including this little thing on the end so you can angle the blasters how you need them to be I think these move in, these sliders move in super easily. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to move them. That's kind of an unfortunate thing. But yeah, he, he doesn't have any wheels in the bottom, so he doesn't roll anymore. It's more of a static piece. But the cool thing is these horns, if you're gentle, you have to be careful. Actually, the, box, or the instructions specifically mention this. Be very gentle. You can pull these out very slowly. And they're actually on a little chain. So, you know, you can emulate the thing in the show where it you know, tosses a horn out. And believe it or not, you know, you think this chain would be super difficult. It's actually really not. You just kind of feed it slowly back in. And as long as you're paying attention, it'll actually go in pretty solidly. And you won't have to worry about the chain jamming things up or anything. And it does on both sides. So that's actually a pretty neat little feature. It makes up for the lack of rolling. But it's actually really cool looking. It's, you know, again, more nice silver paint here. And on the tail as well. And it's actually a really nice little uh, thing. I mean... Looks great and you know expands out a bit, so it's that's nice. And again, these little details on the side. So yeah, it's a nice little update to the original. Um, over here, saber tooth tiger. Yellow, you know, again, lots of detailing here with the the, the tampos and whatnot, not stickers again. Um, yeah, again, articulation. Uh, the tail can move up and down. In case you can also shorten length and depending. Um, these. Rear legs can move forward and back, and they also have a knee, knee joint, as well as a uh, ankle joint that goes forward and back. No side to side there. Uh, up here at the shoulders, clicky joints, so forward and back. Again, no outward. Uh, they do also have knees at the fr front. And once again, ankles, so forward and back, but no side to side on any of those. Up here, though, you got this, which can go left and right just slightly. Just a little bit, but it's enough to get a little bit more. And then, of course, on the neck itself, you got this joint. So it can kind of tilt its head, look up and down a little bit, move a little bit more side to side. And you can open the mouth. There we go. Open the mouth, and I guess you can move the teeth a little bit. Although these are not independent like the original. These are actually connected, which is a good thing in the sense that don't ever come misaligned. So, again, more articulation, but not a whole lot of articulation, but enough to kind of, I guess, satisfy most people. And then you got the Mastodon, who, much like the Triceratops, doesn't really do a whole lot. I mean, this, this you can't even move these like you could on the original. You can't, you can't move these back or anything. But uh, stands again, die cast there, so pretty solid. And the Triceratops and the Triceratops Saber Tooth Tiger both also have die cast as well. I almost forgot that. I think every single one of them have die cast somewhere, so that I means Ch Chogokin line, so of course it does. Um, yeah, the, the, the Mastodon, though, you can't really move the feet at all. The head can look up a bit, and the trunk uh, has uh, three segments to move on. That's really about it. But, you know, nice little detailing again. The yellow, the gold really, and red really pop on the black. Um, it's more show accurate compared to the American original American release of the Megazord. You know, with this design rather than that weird M. Again, more right here, the kind of the ears. I You know, those look nice. Oh, those weird kind of glossy black and you got this matte black here. So it's kind of, that's kind of odd, but the original was the same way, except it was more gray, but... You know, guys, got this symbol up here and everything. Eyes are picked out cleanly. It's a just and the shiny, of course, chromed uh, tusks. It's just really nice looking and nice weight to it. So it's again a nice little update because the well does technically move more than the original did. And finally, you got the Tyrannosaurus. He's probably got the most upgrades compared to his original counterpart. I mean, his tail for one thing. I mean, look at all that. I mean, you got this this detailing instead of the. Um, lightning bolt, nice little detail up here on the chest and everything. He's got um, his mouth can open to those, but and he's also got the little fire blasters in there. His arms can move outwards slightly and up and down, and they also have elbows. As you can see, elbows, yeah. And the claws can actually open and close quite a bit, actually. How far can they go? Not that far, which is nice. And they can close up about that far too. 
So that's uh, pretty good. The tail can swish up and down. Although uh, this, this first joint right here, there's like a spring or something because uh, it just bounces right back. But these other ones can fully move, although this one is actually technically uh, separates for, well, the combined mode. But you can pull it out just about that far, and but the, you know, so you can, but you can do that if you want, or curve it, or whatever you want. There is also now a waist. Look at that. It's a nice clicky waist. And the uh, hips can also, you can't really move back because of the design flaw. You'd have to unpeg the tail, then they can move a little bit, but not a huge deal. I mean, there's not many a lot, many poses for this guy that you're going to unclip that guy. But, you know, they can also move out pretty far. And then if you move that, you even get a complete full uh, motion, which now I'm looking at it looks kind of funny. There's also a thigh swivel. And there's a knee. You can't go any farther than that forward, but it can move quite a bit backwards. And there's also forward foot articulation. That's it. There's no side to side or no one going any farther back than that. But again, it's a nice little update. It's not a huge amount, but it's a nice update to the original. And it does, again, move more than the original. So that is nice in of itself. So those are individual um, Zords. We're going to move on and combine them into the tank mode. And to do that, well, we're going to start off with the leg components. So that means the Sabertooth Tiger and the Triceratops. So I'm going to go ahead and move this guy slightly out of the way for this part and this one as well. And probably, yeah, all those guys. So starting off, Sabertooth Tiger, it's much like the same. You just kind of flatten it out, except there's a couple extra steps. I mean, you got to push the tail in and then then fold it up, otherwise it doesn't fit. Uh, you got to fold those up for clearance's sake, make sure everything's flattened out properly. You know, then rear legs, there's little channels. There's little channels back he down here for the feet to go into. You just kind of fold it up until the wheels are all more or less parallel and whatnot. And then you do this part, just flat fold that down, and you got your right uh, leg ready to go. More or less. Yeah. Triceratops, more involved in the original. Well, for one thing, we'll take the tail and fold it up like that. Simple. Then you take these treads, push all four of them up. And then you take the side pieces and slide them in. And then finally, take this back part and open that up and he's ready to go. So that's those pieces done. Put them over here. And then next, Tyrannosaurus and knock everyone else down. Yeah. Tyrannosaurus, you want to take the claws, close them up if you haven't already, and fold the arms up like such. Hold them up against the chest as far as you can. And then you want to take these legs. You actually open up the shins, and there's a little... Uh, thing in there. Then you slide up this little red panel right here. Move this out and close up the shin and fold it into the hip. Like so. Do the same on this side. Move this red panel up. Pull this uh, connector out. Close the shin back up and move it in. Here's the thing. Also, make sure the hips are facing for straight forward and then also slide the thighs out. At the thighs, you slide them outwards like this. It gives you enough clearance in the tank mode. Now, the other thing you want to do is down here at the knee, you kind of want to move it forward a bit. There's a special joint just for the tank mode. You want to move that forward. As, like such. And you should be ready to go. You may or may not. You shouldn't have to unpin the tail yet, but you may want to just for clearance. But then you take those connector pieces and they go into the little ports right there. It's actually a pretty solid connection. I'll get to those in, again in a little bit, but in this mode for sure. In this mode, yeah, they're definitely a pretty solid connection. So uh, there's the beginnings of tank mode taking shape. I'm going to move the camera down just a tiny bit. And then also refocus a bit. There you go. 
And then you take the Mastodon. He pulls head off. How gruesome. Take that head off. And then the head, what you want to do is there's this little panel tab thing right here. You want to flip that around. Flip that around like that. And then you take the trunk and actually leave it out like that. And there's a little gray thing right here, this light gray part. You kind of pull that out a little bit. You need this little tab right here. And that, on the Tyrannosaurus, there's this little yellow part on his chest right here. You just actually kind of get your fingernail in there and you kind of open that up. There's now a slot right there. Let's see how I can focus on that. You see there's a slot right there. You take that tab and you just kind of put it in there. Um, it's easier to do if you don't have a camera between you and it, but yeah, it actually holds in pretty solidly. Right, right. Yeah, it's a whole, it's a pretty solid connection. Right. Then you want to take these, this, the rest of the mammoth. You want to actually back here. There's panels you want to flip up. It's actually pretty much will take the whole back with it, and then from there you want to open the shoulder pauldrons up, and you got the panels out, and then you just kind of accordion those. These little panels have to fold in. Actually, no, wait. Okay, I remember. Yeah. See this? It's kind of hard to see, but uh, you fold it like that. So it's kind of accordions, and then you fold that all in, and then it into the shoulder. Same on this side. Accordion. Hold up like that, and then fold it into there, and click. Done. You take these legs and move them out like that. Unfold the whole thing. And you kind of you move the arms forward and you heard those nice clicks. And they just kind of go on the back and latch into the sides as such. And from there, you want to take these little cannon pieces, pull them off. And just little square pegs, you plug them into the ends of each arm. And finally, for the pterodactyl, you fold the wings up. Left, then right. You can't do it the other way. It has to be left, then right. So, and then these little notches right here, on the back of here, on these hoot, on the, the back here, is these little panels that you can flip out. Those are what peg into the pterodactyl. This is always kind of difficult to get it lined up properly, and just even without a camera between me. So, so see if I can do it quickly enough. They are these tabs are keyed in such a way that uh, for all this. So, just trying to get them all lined up so it doesn't fall off. And there we go. Got it actually pretty quickly. I'm surprised. Um, so yeah, that is actually. The tank mode, more or less. Maybe I've got some small things wrong. Hopefully not, though, because I'd feel silly at that point. But yeah, it's the tank mode. It's the yeah you know, the tank mode. It's silly, kind of. Again, no wheels, so it doesn't really roll. Just kind of on this surface I have, it just slides a bit. There's no wheels down there, no real ones. Anyway, there's the fake uh, molded ones in the saber tooth tiger, but it's still a you know good you know good um representation of the tank mode from the show it's it's nice that they were able to still throw it in and make it work and all that not and it's also slightly out of frame up top but yeah it's uh it's this big silly tank mode it, it yeah it's a silly thing but it's still cool it's there i like it it's you know it's part of the thing so yeah and that's that. I mean, it still works. It's just, it doesn't roll, unfortunately, but what are you going to do? I think they decided no wheels because, I don't know, cheap things out. So I guess we got one more thing to move on to, and we'll get to the Megazord in just a bit. Moving on to the Megazord, and refocus one more time. Although this is probably a messy thing to focus on because of all this stuff, so I'll have to probably do it again. But yeah, so to do the Megazord, you'll want to take the Pterodactyl off the back here. And this 
and then move those clips and put them back in. Uh, at this point, I also like to take the uh, cannons off these, and you got new pegs, and they just kind of peg into the back of the... They just peg in. There's the two slots. Sarah J. Ford. Again, that's the thing about these cannons. I'm noticing they don't have the greatest hold on a lot of their slots, so just be careful about that. I'm noticing they have a tendency to kind of come loose no matter what you're attaching them to, so just be mindful of that. I think the pterodactyl sensor down here, um, just open the wings back up and then fold the head in, then fold the wings back, and same again, left wing first, then right wing, or else it doesn't work. And also while you're here, there's these little gray tabs, pull them down like that, and the pterodactyl's ready to go. But then if you got the rest, you also gotta take the mastodon, head off, and you gotta close up that yellow piece right there. You can set, you know, fold the trunk in like that, and also pull this gray part out more. So now you got a handle, and we'll set that off to the side for now. And of course, you gotta spin the hooves around. You actually gotta fold. You also gotta roll the or move the elbows inward, else they don't quite. That you get um, bumping issues. So you got to do that, and then you hit the fists, and you got to move the the thumbs forward like that. Then down here at the legs, what you got to do is you have to fold those back down. The the yeah you know, those, those little special joints you have to fold them back flush with the thigh, and then you can uh, unpick clip the tail. You unclip the tail. And you move the feet up. Also, also moving the hips and everything. And also when you're doing so, move those thighs back in. This is where those rocker joints become handy in the feet because there's not quite a whole lot of clearance and then move the course move the arms down because that's what you do the megazord oh yeah one other thing you want to do while you're messing with the feet back here little heel spur for saber tooth tiger kind of important um helps helps a quite a bit he's Triceratops is fine because just of the shape of it, but the tiger does need that. So, up here at the tail, though, right here, you want to move that down, fold it down like that. And on this this uh, segment, there's a little... Yeah, there's a little... little panel right here it can be a little difficult to get you, you know flipped around but you want to flip this little panel around and I'll expose a little tab which goes goes a slot back there right there then you just kind of line that all up and clicks into place and you're almost done it's a little bit more to go from there you open this chest panel move the t-rex head down Close it up. If you want to do the proper order, and then take the pterodactyl. There's the little, little slots here. Oop. Slot there and a the slot there. And those tabs just go into the slots. Those are the main ways held on, and then kind of kind of clicks in down here. Not really super. It's not that's not really a joint for holding in, but it just kind of clicks in. And of course, you take the horns and move them forward, and you have. The original Megazord, ready to go. Or, as many people in Japan, or know him, Daiju, Daijujin. I'm hoping I pronounced that right. So I'm not sure. I think it's a Daiju, Daijujin. And I'm probably butchering it. I'm sorry. Yes. This is the Megazord. He looks... Fantastic. He looks a lot more accurate to the show in general. He's a pretty hefty figure because of all the die cast. I mean, it, it looks great. Uh, the die cast and all the different pieces um, works wonderfully. He's well balanced for the most part. 
And yeah, he looks phenomenal. His proportions are much better than the original. And in fact, I can show you that right now. I mean, one of the problems with the original is he's pretty wide comparatively. I mean, the original is taller, yes, but look at the, it's kind of just noticeably wider. And of course, it's well, you know, you see that the, the pterodactyl is wider and everything compared to this. This is much more accurate to the show. This just kind of has some kind of funky proportions comparatively. I mean, kind of wide. And that's this big problem. And of course, he doesn't move. So, yeah, he's taller, but this Togokin is just a, just a great update. So, I don't mind the loss, loss of height here. So, yeah, just a... Uh, yeah, and articulation. I mean, for one thing, he's his head is actually on a swivel. Unfortunately, not a ball joint, so I can't look up and down, but it's still it's on a swivel, so that's already a bonus already over the original. The shoulders ratchets forward and back, and there's an outward ratchet, and there's a bicep swivel, and there's an elbow which goes about 90 degrees. And of course, there's an inward belt. If you want an inward curl, I guess you got that too. His fingers can open and close. They're it's just one piece, but you know it's still cool. And the thumb is on a ball joint, so it can move all over the place as you need it to. There, we'll get back to the waist in a bit, but there is hips again ratcheting. There is some outward motion. Not a whole lot thanks to the sculpting and stuff. You can only go so far. Yeah, unfortunately, you can only go so far with the hips before you kind of bang and start banging and stuff. So you can only go about that far. About maybe 45 degrees if you're being feeling generous. Uh, he does have thigh swivels. Again, though, thing, the, the dinosaur feet bang into the tail. So you can't get a whole lot of outward, but you get a little tiny bit. Um... Knees. Here's the thing about the knees. It feels like if you look at it, you're like, oh, okay, you bend the knee and that's about it. You think, oh, no, that's it. But actually, no, there is a whole dedicated system in both legs. So they can bend just a little bit further. You go about that far, though. Before, If you try to bend any farther than that, unfortunately, it just kind of pops itself out of its socket. It is a, I've noticed that is a common complaint for this guy. But as long as you know where that tolerance is, you won't probably won't have such a huge problem with it. Just be aware of um, where that tolerance is for him. And you should be fine. And of course, he does have ankle tilts. It's very subtle, but they're there very subtly, though. And you can kind of twist the heads of the feet a little bit more. And you actually can get, actually get some pretty wide poses if you're willing to. See, you can actually get some pretty wide poses. But, you know, the ankle isn't actually tilting that far. It's just mostly the foot. So it's giving you cell. So it's that mo it's an ankle tilt with then combined with a faux ankle tilt to give you, I guess, the appearance of a bigger ankle tilt. Now, the waist swivel. I said I was going to pick. Here's the thing. There is a waist swivel, but as it is, you can't really use it. And the reason is the tail back here is clipped in. Now, if you unclip the tail so it clears the uh, cannons and stuff, all of a sudden, and you have to also kind of be willing to move this up a little bit. All of a sudden, though, you do have waist. You do have a waist. I mean, you're limited. You're going about maybe, yeah, one click in each direction, but you do have a waist swivel. So that's, and again, this will bump this forward a little bit. It'll bump the chest piece forward a little bit, but, you know, you can kind of move it back. And, you you know, then you can have a somewhat. So, yeah, it's about all you get waist swivel-wise, so... That kind of stinks, but eh, it'll be, it's fine. I mean, it's still better than before. That's for sure. Accessories though. He's got, of course, got his, the Mastodon, you know, shield now. And that just, you know, that handle, you want to move the handle as far out like that. And then just kind of slides right in the fist. No problem. Um, the thing about the Mastodon thing is, yes. Fortunately, he does hold it a little loosely, in my experience. It's a little loose, but you can see it's kind of 
wobbling, but he kind of holds it okay. And of course, though, he has his sword. Look at that. It's nice, shiny. It's got the gold detailing down here. The black handle, you know, it's black handle, silver tip. And of course, that could also just slide right in. The handle is long enough for both hands to grip. The problem is, of course, well, oh, I almost forgot. He does have um, wrist swivels. That's kind of important. Yeah, his handle, the handle's long enough for both hands to grasp it. Grasp it. The problem is his articulation is not good enough to be able to do a double-handed uh, wielding. And that's the unfortunate thing there. Um, yeah, he just... He, his articulation prevents him from actually doing such a thing. And that's kind of unfortunate. Because you'd hope that he could, but... It's just this, this sculpt prevents it. You'd have to do some crazy shenan engineering shenanigans to make that work. And I guess they just weren't willing to do it, even though it is a $300 toy. Yeah, like $300. I got mine for $275 um, with free shipping. That was a nice deal I got. Um, but that's the thing. He's $300. He is... Shogokin releases are not exactly cheap. So if you're a Shogokin co collector, you're already kind of like, okay, yeah. Um, if you're a Chogokin complete completionist, you probably already bought it. But if you're like, just, I want a Power Rangers thing, or um, I want the Megazord, or I want Daizujin, for whatever, whatever. That's the thing, is, is he worth $300? I mean, he's a good size. Don't get me wrong on that. He's a good size. He's a, he's big, and he's heavy. But... $300 is asking a lot. Um, this is for me, for me personally, this was kind of then the just barely worth. Once I got a hold of him and played with him a bit, I mean, you know, I remember her, I saw that some of the initial reports of like, oh, he's kind of limited compared to Voltron who just came out before him. You know, both of them are five piece combiners and they're both the same, about roughly the same size. And people were like, yeah, Voltron is just kind of overall better. And that may be right. I don't know. I wasn't able to kind of budget for both. That's $600 in the span of two months on toys. And it's like, I wasn't really to go for that. So for me, as a, you know, growing up and having nostalgia for the original Power Rangers is kind of like, yeah, it's worth it, but just barely worth it. Uh, Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's that $300 thing. is going to be a very steep price and going to put a lot of people off. Um, There are cheaper options for it. If you want just a Megazord of some sort, there's the, uh, I think the was it the, the Bandai the little kit the model kits they released they're doing a Megazord it's smaller than this it's all plastic but it's smaller and cheaper and you can build it yourself which is kind of neat. Um, there's that I guess the what was it they call it the um, Super Robot I mean I guess that's still technically cheaper although the price just keeps going up on that and again he's also smaller and he can't disassemble into the individual Zords. And there's also the version that kind of comes with the Legacy figures again they can't really disassemble it's its own kind of becomes its own separate action figure. So if you want a nice combining one, you really got two options or three options, I guess, if you want to include the legacy stuff, which is, you know, a hundred bucks, I think, if I recall, if you can still find, it. I mean, those haven't been uh, in stores for a while. And that's the thing. Your, all your options are kind of on the expenses. I think the cheapest one is the, I think, 70 something dollars or so for the smaller bottle kit thing. I can't remember the call. I think they're like Gunpla or something. I can't remember. I wish I I knew I wish I knew more about this sort of thing, but I'm not I'm no go good super and hardcore into Bandai stuff, so this is all kind of new to me, the whole Chogokin thing and everything. I mean if they ever reissue Voltron, I might get that too, but I'm not gonna go crazy unless like they have some of the big robots I kinda like or think, okay, that's cool. Um yeah, like I said, for me, the nostalgia of the original Power Rangers is just enough to carry it over that, you know, to make the $300, or in my case, $275. I paid for it justifiable, but again, just barely. If for some reason, the, I think these are still in stock, and you can still find, easily find these in stock at $300 most places. Um, if you're really into Power Rangers or really want just one really cool one collector's item, this might just be worth it. Just barely. It's one of those... You really have to, how much, how nostalgic are you for Power Rangers or how much are you into giant toy robots or what, or combining things or whatever? It, it, it's 300, it's kind of hard to really, it's hard to justify, but again, if you have nostalgia for it, if you have nostalgia and you have the money 
and you have the space, I say go for it. But again, just remember it's three hundred dollars, and you may not, you may still be disappointed with like the articulation. It's still not like what you would probably want. You still the waist is still limited, the knees are limited, the thighs are limited. The, yeah, so there are still limits. The um, unfortunate limits. I I wish the head was on a ball and joint. I wish the waist wasn't so hindered. I wish the knees were a little bit better. And I wish this was held in this Mastodon head had held in a little bit better. But he's still I still don't regret buying it. It's just it's that really just on the edge of acceptable in my opinion. Um Yeah. So if you're hardcore, this hardcore if you're a hardcore collector, you probably have one. Um if you're just kind of like I just want one cool Megazord, he might just barely be worth it. You're gonna have to really ask yourself if you're willing to pay three hundred dollars for this one Megazord, there are other options available if you really are willing, if you're willing to go for a smaller scale or whatever, or just, you just want something. If, if, if you just want something that looks cool, the Legacy one, it's just a barely mod, it's a barely updated version of the original, so it still has all, most of the same um, issues of the original, it even has a few new ones just because of the update stuff. So yeah, this is like, I guess the ultimate Megazord. But he comes with a steep asking price. You're going to have to ask yourself, it's worth that asking price. And I've said that so many different times. So I think it's about time for me to wrap up. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you'll like, comment, or, and or subscribe if you did. Um, I do mostly Transformer stuff. But other stuff like this might come up every once in a while. Um, again, this has been the Bandai Soul Chogokin GX72 Megazord. Or Daizujin. So... Until next time, um, I'll see you guys later.